Hey, what is up everybody, it's Ivan here, and in this video we'll make a Python script that web scrapes Google Images. Uh, we'll use a very popular web automation testing library called Selenium to do it, and the actual special thing about this video, I would say, you know, we'll, we'll have a script that'll work, and that'll like pull the images and all that good stuff, but I actually think that the most valuable thing about this video is going to be the fact that I think in general it's a very interesting web scraping use case. And I think web scraping is like one of the things that every programmer should like have in their tool belt, right? That they can pull up and use because it's just, you know, you, you never know what, when it could be useful, right? Like I was talking to like a person the other day and he was telling me how he used a, uh, like a Selenium script to like purchase a bicycle, right? Because like it was only available like on an e-store only like a limited amount of time. And it's, it's a very useful, uh, thing to know about and I feel like this video, you know, will will uh, solve a useful task which is like will download the publicly available images from Google using Python but also will like learn the logic and the basics of how it all works together. So if that if that's something that you're like interested in, you know, make yourself comfortable. Uh, if you enjoyed this video, feel free to smash the like button and uh, subscribe and let's get started. But before we dive into code, I just wanted to really quickly tell you about the Yellow U5 series, uh, which is a series of videos that I've made on the Weights and Biases YouTube channel about training a custom Yellow U5 object detection model. And that's uh, much like how I've done on this channel for the Yellow U3 series, just for the Yellow U5, uh, and I think in like a much higher quality, <laughs> you know? And part two of that series is actually a video that focuses on like all the cool tips about collecting and labeling uh, like object detection data sets and uh, this is kind of how this video how I got the idea to make this video also because uh, I didn't have time to cover like web scraping in that video but I think it's such a such useful uh, such a useful thing to be able to do when you like quickly want to get some images test some applications if those images are like you know, free to use for your specific application. That's important to say here, uh, if you actually can use them. So if you're watching this video and you have like a uh, an object detection use case in mind, uh, feel free to check out the Yellow 5 series. Yeah. All right, so let's first figure out like what are the uh, Python module dependencies we have. Uh, that we need to have in order to like build the application. So first thing we gotta do obviously is to install Selenium and the way to do it is just like you would install any other Python module mostly. So first thing we do is we go into the our Python folder where, like where Python was installed. Um, a very easy way to find the Python folder like on Windows is to do this. Open the console and write where uh, Python and this will pretty much be the path for where it's installed. And we can open it. And here we go into the scripts folder and open the console prompt again, but from the scripts folder. And here we can run the pip install commands. So uh, I already have Selenium installed, but if I didn't, I would run this to get it installed. As you can see, it's saying I already have it, obviously. Mm. So another library that we'll need is BS4, which is like beautiful soup, and it's used to parse HTML and like get useful information from it. And web pages are basically HTML. So you would do this to install it. Beep install BS4. I already have it. And I'm I think it's pretty much all of the I think these other modules are standard Python modules, so you should already have them installed uh, by default with Python. Mm. But the uh, thing about Selenium is that you actually need to also, if you're on Google Chrome, you need to download the Chrome driver. So it can just use the normal Chrome and use that to automate things. It needs this Chrome driver, which lets it use the normal Chrome and do all the things that it needs to do. Um, you can get the Chrome driver on this uh, on this page. I'll leave a link down in the description. The only thing to like watch out for here is which version of Chrome are, are you using. Uh, the way to check it is to go to here to help about Google Chrome, 
and here you can see your version. So I'm on Chrome 93, so I have the Chrome driver downloaded for Chrome 90, 93. And then we'll, we'll sort the rest of the things when, once we actually start writing code. All right, so now we're looking at a Python file. Um, I've, I've opened it in PyCharm, which is like an ID that I like, but you obviously can you know, run Python code wherever you like, whatever runs Python for you. Um, I've already written the lines that import the, the modules that we'll need, and this is like the coding format that I'm going for here is that we're not gonna, I'm not gonna be typing things, but I'm kinda gonna be showing you lines of code, what they do, and explaining them. And I'll also put the actual finished project on GitHub, so if you just like want the code, you can quickly go there and skim through it, download it. Uh, just however, like, however is useful for you. Uh, but yeah, here are like all the libraries that we'll use, and here's we here we get to something that I've talked about like a minute ago, which is the Chrome driver. Um, here I've defined the Chrome driver path, and for me it's located in this folder. You can put it wherever it's whatever works for you. I kind of prefer a folder that's not dependent on a given project that I'm working on, such, such that like I can have. No, multiple projects in different folders and they just reference a Chrome driver that's stored somewhere. But yeah, uh, if I look at where it's stored, uh, here it's this guy. And as you can see, I have quite a collection here. Uh, all the Chrome drivers, like as I was updating my Google Chrome and I had to like jump to a newer version of Chrome driver, I would keep renaming them something like this. And so I've got quite a collection here. But yeah, that's the most like recent, recent one that I'm using. Uh, and uh, feel free to put your Chrome driver wherever you wanna. That's what I'm saying. Um, yeah, after we've done that, we can call uh, Note note something here. So the library is called Selenium for web automation, but the actual thing that we use from that library is the web driver. So in this line of code, we call web driver dot Chrome and we pass, pass here the Chrome path. And so what, what's it gonna do is it's, it's gonna um, start, like it's gonna, let me, you know, why am I telling you this? Let me show you this actually. It's gonna open like this, uh, this Chrome driver, Google Chrome browser. And it says here that it's been controlled by the automated software, which is like what we're doing here. Um, but it's gonna start it and it's gonna actually give the controls of that browser. It's gonna like uh, write the controls of that browser into the driver variable here. And this this variable here is actually what we're gonna use most of the times when interacting with this automated browser. Hope that makes sense, honestly. Uh, but yeah. Now we can, um, let's close this window. Now, the next thing that we can do here is we, we're talking here about web scraping publicly available images from Google Images. So we need to format a search request, which we can do in this way. So for instance, uh, let's say we're looking for car parts. I'll say here car plus parts, and that'll be our search URL, which opens Google Images which, with that. And we call driver, which no, it's our automated browser that you know, we call driver, uh, that get, and we pass the search URL there. So we can do that and see what it's, it's gonna show us. And uh, it's gonna search for car parts. And as you can see, that, that that's our search request here. In the Yolo 5 series, uh, I'm showing the example with uh, bus images. So we can put here, for instance, the term bus, and it's gonna open Google Images with the search term bus here. Yeah. So a way to think about web scraping is that we're not getting any privileges or we're not getting any special access. If our goal is to download this publicly available Google images from Google Images, you know, we can do this with our mouse and like in, a, in our keyboard by just like clicking on them and you know, saving images, saving images, saving images. This is by the way what the script is gonna be pretty much doing just in an automated way. Uh, but the only thing we're actually leveraging is the fact that, <laughs> is the fact that I guess our time is valuable and we do not wanna be spending it doing tasks that can be automated. Uh, and I'm sure a lot of, you know, especially, you know, I think people who are like into programming, we kind of feel feel this way because whenever I see a task that like, you know, 
that can be automated. I just immediately get this thing like, you know, let us just write a script. Like, why do we have to do this, do this, do this by hand? And that's kind of what this video is about, I would say. So another thing to note here is that we're not logged into any sort of Google account. So the images we're seeing here are pretty much the images that, you know, any person or a machine for that matter uh, could see if they just have the access to the internet, right? And then the topic of the machine learning use case example that I've given previously, um, I'm obviously not a lawyer, <laughs> nor am I qualified to speak for millions or billions or the infinity of the various possible machine learning applications. Uh, but we can kind of, you know, get the main idea by looking at the publicly available, really, really popular uh, datasets like ImageNet or the Coco dataset that have been, you know, instrumental to the development of machine learning and deep learning, like, you know, as they are, um, especially the deep learning, probably. And ImageNet has like 14 million images, Coco dataset has like over 120,000 images, and those images are um, have been web scraped from the internet. And uh, the both like both dataset providers, I guess, say that they do not own um, they do not own the copyright of the images. And so while they do not own the copyright of all of the images that they have, they actually say here that for researchers and educators, for non-commercial research and or educational purposes, uh, they can provide access through their site to the images uh, under certain conditions and terms. Um, so that's basically, you know, th they're saying like, hey, for non-commercial research use, we can provide you... Uh, with, with those images, even though like we do not, do not own the copyright for them. So what I'm trying to say here basically is that, um, you know, if you're planning to use what I'm showing in this like video for some sort of commercial use, I just really, really recommend to like speak with lawyers or whatever, wh whoever you need to speak with. Uh, but that's also what I'm trying to say is that if you're building an, a like an educational or like a research-based application, and that's how you use it, uh, you're probably fine because you know the biggest data sets are, you know, kind of giving us the web scraped images that they do not own the copyright to for like research and education educational purposes. So while I think that the whole like web scraping thing, like it's it's you know it's kind of fascinating how it's been like instrumental to the like internet and the developments of different things and even if you look at like google like how does google get these images right like they have a bot that like goes through like uh other publicly available websites and like you know tries to extract the information from them and then use that to rank the uh to to, to rank it in like their search results right uh so while all of that is super interesting, uh, that's not what this video is about, actually, surprisingly enough. Uh, but I kind of wanted to still uh, give you like some, share some of the things that I've found uh, on the topic. And feel free to, you know, if you have thoughts on that or like comments, like feel free to, uh, you know, share them in the comments. Because like I know that probably it's uh, there's a lot more to the story. But in our video, we're uh, just, you know, downloading the publicly available images. So, we're cool. Um, anyways, now let's actually talk about our application here. Alright, so the uh, way that I've shown in the beginning of the video that the scraper works, where it, like, clicks on the images here, and it, like, you know, selects them, clicks on them, uh, all that. Um, like, why is that necessary? M you may be asking, like... Uh, we're, you know, we're seeing all of the images here, they're displayed, like, why, why, why the whole, like, clicking thing? Um, so, actually, in the past, that wouldn't really be necessary, because, uh, I clicked F12, by the way, to open this window, to this, like, developer tools, uh, in, in Chrome. Uh, yeah, so, that actually wouldn't be necessary, because we could pretty much... Uh, open the HTML of a page and be able to get the full res images from there. Mm. So, wow. like here, the actual images that we're seeing are, 
you know, are the are the like low res images, and the, if we click on the URL, so like this is not the full res image of a bus. Uh, the full rem the full res image is actually um, this one, and so as you can see, it's like quite a difference in in the resolution and everything. And so, you know, we could just do something that would get like this little thumbnail -y images, uh, but that wouldn't be full resin, that wouldn't be, you know, that wouldn't be as useful as actually, uh, you know, as actually getting like the fuller res ones, I guess. So, um, what we can actually do here is we, you know, as I've, as I've kind of hinted here, the, the way to get the full res image is to actually click on it. And then in this window, the image, the image that gets loaded is actually the, like, the full res image. Most of the time. Sometimes if it's like a super, like, you know, 10k pixels by 10k pixels image, it will still not load. But that's rather rare. So most of the, like, normal images will load and give us the actual URL uh, to, 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 to the to the full res image. And URL is basically, you know, a link to an image file. And the whole process of downloading these images comes down to ultimately to, hey, how can we take this page with with images and how, c how can we get like the URLs for, for each of the ones presented here? So here's something, uh, you know, very important to understand if you're getting into like, you know, building a web scraping application to like understand is that um, when you see a web page like that, and this applies not just to Google Images, pretty much anything that's like, you know, a normal website with data that gets updated every once in a while, or that has like multiple ele elements that it displays, like all of these are like actually, uh, all of these images are stored in like identical uh, containers of HTML code and we can scroll up a little bit and here's one so as you can see like this uh, Container with HTML has all the data that's presented here for this image. This one has all the data for this image um, So then this one has all the data for this image 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 and etc 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 so whole thing is like super repetitive and what we can do so let's see how it looks in code, uh, kind of our approach, right? So we've loaded the browser, and he here's um, here it invokes like an input statement just to essentially install the program. The idea is that we want to be able to uh, scroll through images, to, like load as many images as we want to load, and dump somewhere like at the bottom of a page, like maybe here. Uh, and then after we're at the bottom of the page, uh, you know, there's a line of code that scrolls up so that the script can start clicking on things from the top of the page. And then, let me actually show you what's gonna happen then and I'll explain. So as you can see, it scrolled up and it says we found 400 image containers. Now, what does it mean? Uh, remember how I was showing you here, like this way of looking at this like image containers? Um, you can see that the tag of this HTML element is like div and they have a class named this. So what we're actually doing, doing in our code is we're saying that page, page HTML equals to driver that page source. And this is essentially a built-in way for this uh, web driver to just uh, send all of the HTML into this variable here. And then we're using the beautiful soup library that we've talked about before to uh, to parse that HTML and to parse it in a way where we find all of the elements that have a class, uh, not this one, have a class dev, uh, that have a tag dev and the class of this. As you can see, it's the same thing right here. Uh, and then we, uh, then we print the length of the, of the list of these containers, uh, so that we know how many images we have. And that's gonna be important. I, I'll explain why in just a second. But yeah, it says that like after we scroll through the whole page down to this show more results button, uh, we actually get like 400 images here. And so to stay true to the theme of the video, uh, what, we're, what we've looked at here 
regarding you know finding all of the image containers uh, the, the the image data containers and google images uh pretty much the same applies to finding like any other containers on any other websites you know you may uh just instead of like having like a class parameter here you may, you may have like you know like name parameter or like literally anything uh that's uh that's like you could put like data ri or something uh so it's like super flexible and, and can, can be applicable like on any websites not just you know not, not just google images basically so yeah um why is it important for us to know how many images are displayed uh that's because that's actually what we're gonna use to click on them so yeah so the selenium web driver actually has a way for us to click on different elements of the page based on uh you know based on their like x path or their css selector or, or or anything it works kind of like this for instance we can say driver find element by x path i typically do x path it's just like a way of locating the html elements and the way you get the x path uh is by like like this you can like literally click on this guy here scroll up to the container um, and here you can click copy uh, xpath go back and the xpath then looks like this right uh, we can you know you could do so also by like copying the CSS selector by doing um, by doing this copy selector just close this one um, it's essentially the same thing. I kind of like XPaths. They seem a little cleaner to me. I don't know. Uh, but yeah, after we found an element like this, we can actually then... Let's actually say that like that is the element we found by XPath. Uh, probably should use triple quotes here. Uh, and say click. So you'll see what's going to happen now. It waits, okay, right, it waits. Click this thing, and voila, it clicks on the first element here. Um, now, here's something interesting that we can notice here. Um, if I say copy, maybe, if I say get the X path of the, of like the third image here, like this guy, uh, and let's get its X path, and let's see how it looks like. Its X path will look like this. See, it's diff three. Uh, so it's not too hard to guess. Let's say the X path of the fourth guy would be would be would be would be. It'd be um, this. And so as you can see, there's like a clear thing where. Uh, so we can see that this digits here, like, you know, this one, this one, this one. In the X path language, they actually mean uh which like which number of like which image by its number are we talking about like the first the second third fourth etc 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 if i scroll like all the way down i don't know maybe here we'll see i don't know which number but we'll see like a higher number because we've scrolled down because the actual place where that image is you know located it's like there are more more images before it you know what i mean um so then this number will be higher now one of the things that broke and one of the things that like outright did not work when i first wrote this uh application so the the way i made it is such that it would start essentially um clicking on all of this all of these elements i, I just made like a simple cycle that would start from like one go to two three, four, and would put this uh, X path here and then call click. And it would work to the extent that it would actually click on things just like that. But then I noticed something really, really interesting. And this is why I think it's important that I'm explaining this to you, because uh, that probably would not have been a problem like a few years back or something. Because if we start clicking just like that long enough, let's say we click, 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 eventually we see something like this related searches which is it's not an image right like it's not an image but if we actually look at the html like 
So yeah, we find this related searches container and it's not an image, but if we actually look at how the X paths go, we can actually see that like this guy here has the X. So, you know, this guy here has, has the X path of this. And this guy here um, has the X path just like a number higher than, than the other guy. So if, we, so if we run like a simple cycle like that, what, what's what's it gonna do and what, what it's done in like the first applications that I've built it would click like this, and it, then it would like click somewhere here, and it would go to another tab and then break because it no longer can click in the same order and because it's like the whole different page and it, it, it wasn't that good. And so I started to think, how can we avoid, uh, what's like a simple way to avoid clicking on those guys? And so what I found is, look, uh, this guy from here, it has the number 25, so it's the 25th container element in this page. Let's scroll lower, we see the next guy here. Let's see what's, what its X path is. And again, we need X path so that we could like reasonably click on things. Its X path is 75. That doesn't prove my point really, but that's just because probably I've met some in the middle, maybe this guy. Yeah, that's the, guy was, that's the guy that was in the middle. So this is us basically like doing the investigative work together, we could say. Uh, and this is so far like all of these related searches elements that we found. They have number 25, 50, 75. Let's maybe scroll a bit lower. Um, so let's say, um, let's say, let's say, let's say that's the, that's the first one, second one. Um, third one. Let's find the fourth one. This guy. Here. Copy. Xpath. It's 100. So, we kind of see a trend here, and spoiler alert, that trend continues, which is, you know, as you see, these related search elements, they pop up into the search results every 25 other, like, normal elements. So, Based on that, we can write a for loop that I'll show you in just a moment that makes it such that we actually avoid the, those elements. And that's why kind of, I think it's valuable that I'm sharing kind of with you this process because if it's a different website or if something like changes in two years with Google, you can kind of still, you know, do your own little investigative work and get it to work. So yeah, a little update. I've actually done some tests now, and I found that sometimes this, uh, you know, related search elements, they might actually be under different X paths, but there's still an easy way to get around it that I've added into the code, just like a try and accept statement on the thing that tries to find the preview image. It'll be in the final code on GitHub, uh, but just wanted to let you know that uh, that also can happen. So, we've just discovered that every 25th container in the Google Images page is actually that related searches container on which if we click, we get redirected and lose, like, track of everything. So, here's the... So, this essentially ensures that we do not click on every 25th element. And so, that automatically excludes number 25, 50, 75, 100, 125, 150, 175, 200, and so on, so on, so on. And so then for, for the elements which do qualify that are not, uh, that are not the related searches, we for, format this X path and we use that X path to click on things. So just watch this now, it's gonna be pretty, pretty cool. Um, it starts to wait. So let's say, let's say we scroll a little again, we load, mo load more images into the page, etc., etc. And then I say A, and now look at this. That's already like, I couldn't, you know, that's the cool thing like about web scraping and just web automation and programming in general. Like you can do things that like, you know, we wouldn't, who would click on things like that with their hands? So uh, as we can see, it's finished clicking on 100 images. Right now there's more, but because as we were scrolling down, it's loaded more, but it's actually gotten through the initial uh, set, of, set that we've given it to in the beginning. So there's that now.
so you might kind of think right now that like all we gotta do is you know we click on all of these images we grab the you know we grab the high res images and we just really quickly skim through them and that's it and that's kind of what i thought also but it's actually a little bit more complicated than that let me explain if i click on an image you can see that there's a period of time before it actually loads uh where we see kind of like a blurrier image where is it visible like here yeah, you see like it's blurry, but then it actually loads. So let me actually go ahead and disconnect myself from the internet and I'll <laughs> make a make a point. Um, yep. So now that I'm disconnected from the internet, I can't load any new images. So now we can see if I click on this one, it doesn't end up, you know, loading the high res image. It just stays at this one. And this, you might, might kind of ask, what's this blurry image here? And it's actually the same image as it is here. And I'll tell you why it's important in, in, in like just a second. But as you can see, if we go here and we check the uh, SRC, the source, and the source inside the image tag means the URL of an image. If we check this source, we can maybe like memorize a part of it, like say this A and D nine G part, and look in the and then look at this guy. A and D nine G, so so the URLs are the same. So what conclusion can we come to from it? We can come to the conclusion that the uh, images that are being displayed immediately after we click on a given image, like in this larger preview, are still those smaller images that were displayed here, like the compressed images of lower res. And so if we were to grab this URL here, that would just give us the lower res image and that wouldn't be any use. Uh, so what we understand from that is that we need to figure out a way to know exactly how much we need to wait before the higher res image loads, right? Um, and what I was showing you is actually still useful and actually very useful and actually very relevant in that regard because the way that I propose that we, uh, that we actually wait for the full res image to load is that we can be, is that we can be grabbing this image because once we click on this, we can use Selenium to grab the SRC of this image tag here. Uh, we'll be kind of grabbing this image over and over and over and over and over again. And before that, we'll also grab the preview and we'll be checking if they're the same. And the moment that they're not the same, it will mean that the full res image has loaded and we can save the URL and we can continue. Um, let me show you how it looks in code. <laughs> so here's what's actually now different in code. So first of all, as I was saying, we impl implement the ability to get the URL of the preview image for the one that we're looking for. For that, we're, we're again using the X path because we can, uh, again, I click F12 to open this window because I, I just like, do it so often. It's pretty much the backbone of the whole approach. So uh, we use, you know, we I essentially use Again, the X path of the, but but the X path not of the image container, but but of the actual like, image element, and I get it by just like, clicking on this image directly and finding this like image tag here. So uh, it's this guy here, as you can see, that we've just copied there is essentially this guy here because this guy here is meant to do the same thing as. You know what I'm trying to say. I'm trying to show you where I got the expat from, basically. Um, and here, uh, I, you know, oh, you know, like the this part of the path is the part of the path for the container up to this point, and this is how we get the element that contains the URL of the preview image. And again, I also, you know, as you can see, uh, insert the I variable, which is our like iterative variable, which counts, you know, and st steps up the count for the container that we're clicking on. So this guy gives us the preview image URL. We then, you know, we get the X path of, you know, of a given, like we get the X path of an element of a particular image we're looking at. Um, then we use driver find element by x path so we'll find that element pre preview image element i call it here 
Uh, and then we call preview image element get attribute src. And as I was saying with the image tags, src means this guy, which is the URL. Or in, in this case, it's not a URL. In this case, like this guy here, it's uh, uh, like represent it's an image coded as a string of text but it's the same thing for us because you know we'll be checking once it's different then we know that it's actually loaded the uh, full rest url uh now uh that's the second part that i've added and to talk about it a little bit to, to, to like step a little bit further I'll say that I've added here a time parameter because as I was saying, it doesn't always load the full res image. Uh, when, when an image is like super high res or I don't know, something just happens to it, it might not load the full res one. It happens really, really rarely, but it did. So I, I've added this thing where if it's still not finding that, it will kind of, no, it will time out essentially if it, if it can't load it for more than 10 seconds. Uh, yeah, and it's a simple like time thing here that's that's doing that. But let's actually look at the interesting thing, which is like how do we get this full res image? Again, I pretty much do this by getting the X path of this element. So copy X path, and that's pretty much as you can see this element right here. And this one stays constant. So regardless of which uh which container are we looking at, whether it's container 50 or container 60, this thing that pops up is the same for all of them. So the X path uh, also stays the same, right? Uh, yeah, essentially we get the X path, we get the image URL, and then we do this simple Python thing, uh, the, you know, if expression. If image URL we just got here from this box is, uh, different like if it's if it's different from the one that we got as the preview one then we break out of this loop and after that you know we can go and download it if it's not different then we go into the else thing and here we just you know here we just check the time essentially and we check the time because this is a while loop it's going to keep on going 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 and if it's going for more than 10 seconds so if the difference between the current time and the time started is more than 10 seconds, you know, I just print here like timeout, you know, say, we'll, you know, the script will essentially, will try to like download the lower res one, because uh, it can't get the higher res one, and we'll still break out of this loop so we just don't get stuck there. But it's actually pretty, pretty cool when, when you look at it. So, because it's actually gonna run a bunch of times before it can get the fuller res image. Let me show you. Let's say I'll write here, um, waiting for the full res image. Um, probably should put it somewhere here. So let's say I'll print here, waiting for the full res image. And let's say I'll print here the, let's say once it gets the print full res URL. And we'll print here the, um, image URL. Start. So as you can see, it's doing like a bunch in a bunch of iterations while it's waiting for the, for us to get the full res image. But the added benefit of that, like how I thought of solving that first, I would just add it like a simple time slip thing. And it's not that efficient because you know it always waits the same amount of time and and this way we can you know because you can see it's doing a bunch of tries so literally pretty much the moment that we get the full res image it just gets the full res image so here's what, what i was talking about for images that are, that are like this like 5000 by 3000 as you can see it can't get the like the full res url like it just doesn't lower in this box so for those images like we can just go and attempt to load, uh, like download them from the from the preview image URL, or you know, or however you want to like implement that if you play around with the project. But that's kind of how I did that. Anyway, I thought it was kind of cool. I thought it was kind of like a cool approach for for handling this type of thing. Yeah. Uh, now, let's move on. I think the next thing is like downloading, pretty much. Yeah.
And while I was talking, by the way, it's scanned all the like 50 images from the initial page. Yeah, so, and just like that, I've added just three things that made the script now fully functional. Um, let's look at them. So first of all, I used the inbuilt like Python's default OS module to um, create a folder called images. And the way it's doing it is it checks if, um, if this folder does not exist. So if OS path is their folder name, like is not true, it makes that directory. So if you already have that directory created, like it's not gonna, you know, create another one. And, and uh, therefore, if you wanted to ha have like another folder, you'd go to like rename it like here or something. That's the first thing. Second thing, added the function to download the image. It uses the request module and the function in itself inputs the URL, folder name, and the number. Number, I think of the number as I in this for loop. So, so we kind of get like some way to name the images. So we'll have image one, image two, image three, image 50, 60, 75, 487, right? Um, yeah, and so and then it uses that to pretty much, you know, it uses the request modules to download the URL, um, and it then, like, puts the path together with the folder name and the number of the, like, which which number the image correspond, corresponds to in our loop, um, and then it just writes that file into that folder. So, third thing, um, and the third thing is this, where we just like after, and it actually shouldn't be, it shouldn't be like here. Yep. Uh, after we break out of this while loop by either getting the full res URL or by getting time out it, cause like, you know, it's not gonna load the full res URL for 10 seconds. We go here and try to download it. Nice. So if you're wondering why this try accept construction here when downloading the images, um, there are actually two ways that I've observed the downloading part fail. The first part is when requests can't ver verify the SSL certificate, and it has something to do with like safety of the downloaded file and resistance to attacks. So you can essentially go here and say verify uh, like false, and it will not have those errors. But at the same time, you know, it starts showing you like warnings each time it tries to download things. And I thought like it's kind of rather a rare thing. So I didn't really care to, you know, I didn't really mind not downloading a few images if it couldn't like fully verify a few things. And second part where it couldn't get them is when, you know, you know how I was showing you like the images that were the, the when it can get the full res image, so it tries to download the preview image, because again, you know, here it's getting the image URL, and like, if it time, times out, it still gets that image URL, but like it passes on it here, and so it could be the preview image URL if, you know, if the whole thing time out it. Yeah, and when it's do when the preview image is like that, not a URL, not a link, but like an actual image representing this text, obviously it can download that. Besides that, it like works. So we can now run it together and just like see. Oh yeah, and so I tried to run this thing and it didn't work and I found the error and it was basically like this other thing that I've pasted this line, this lines of code, uh, like inside the while true loop and they obviously should be outside one. So like only once we get the URL that we can trust, only then we try to download it. So, as you can see here, the images folder has been created. Um, so, happy birthday <laughs> images folder, I guess, um, from from that attempt. But anyway, yeah, let me actually let's actually now run this thing and, and I'll show you how cool it is. Uh, again, we scroll, 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 scroll. Um, we remember that this line of code here will scroll us, scroll us up. Uh, so that like because I tried it and like again it can't click on things if it's so far down, but we've scrolled and the reason why we scroll by the way is because, um, like if we're looking for a term called bus right there's pretty much you know as many buses as as you want like it's a really common search term, but if we have something like more specific like I don't know like some graffiti on the streets of Paris, 
in the spring uh, on odd days of the week or something or uh, like I don't know on, on like weekends like some some weird thing right Google may find you a fair amount of those images but like you know after a while it'll stop making sense and so that we have a uh, direct way of monitoring it we can scroll ourselves and kind of see the line where, where the images that it shows are still relevant and then we can um, scroll and see where it stops being relevant and then after we see that it stops being relevant we can go here and click like uh, waiting for user input to start and we'll start clicking on things and now it actually starts to download them yep so and we can see in the images folder like images are appearing here as, as, as it's doing, as it's doing all of that. Yeah, so for this image, again, for some reason it can't, you know, get the full res URL, like it just doesn't load. So, you know, it tries to, you know, it says timeout, so it means that the path is also represented as that base64 string, um, so it wasn't the URL. But as you can see, most of the times it just goes pretty cleanly, downloads thing, things. And what's important here is that like, it doesn't crash when it like encounters an image that it can't handle. So let's see how it'll handle this bus. Because it's obviously... Yeah, it says that it'll download a lower resolution image of that bus. Let's check it, let's check it. But it's still fine, you know. The most important thing is like, that, that the images that we can get the full res of, we're getting them. And that, you know, that for all the other images, yeah, they're actually full res. So, like, it's pretty cool. All the pixels are in place. I don't know, it's, it's a, it's, it's, yeah, it's a pretty cool thing about, like, web scraping, how... We're not doing anything that a person could not have done. Oh, did you see it, by the way? Remember how we were talking? It skipped the related searches and did not click on that element. Yeah. So pretty much, you know, what would probably take us a lot of blood, sweat, and tears to just go and click and download, click and download, click and download, click and download. We can just go grab a cup of coffee and our browser is not doing something that a human couldn't do. It's just, you know, freeing up our time to do things that we're better suited for doing, I guess, you know? Anyways, thank you for watching this video and I hope that you enjoyed it and found it useful in any ways that you did. As I was saying, I think that web automation and web scraping are um, some of the, are like, some of the things that like every programmer should have in their tool belt because their potential to save you time is just insane. And also their potential to uh, the, the, their potential to help you save time for people who don't know how to like do web automation is also insane so that's kind of why I thought it would be cool to dive you know to dive deep into this whole thing because you know it just can be useful on so so many levels um I also you know I want to mention it again but like kill v5 series if you are looking to train like an object detector, a custom object detector, or would just like to check out more content from me, like on the Weights and Biases channel, I have series that I've put so much effort into. They're like pretty much, you know, some of the highest quality tutorials probably I've ever made. Uh, so if you're interested, I'll also leave links for that in the description down below. But, uh, it would be really cool if you checked it out too, if you're interested in that type of thing. And smash that like button, consider subscribing to the channel to see the upcoming videos, and just doing the subscribing and liking just to let you know that like you enjoyed it. And the uh, ways to support me are in the description down below if that's something that you want to do. And uh, yeah, just thank you guys for watching, I hope you enjoyed it and found it useful.